So let's get on to the reporting. So as I say, here's an example of, of what a good report should look like, okay? So the top table is how we might report the reserves. The bottom table is how we might report, say, prospective resources, undiscovered resources. And you can see I haven't tried to mix the two together, which is, again, a no-no under the rules. So in the top table, I might list field one, two, and three. What we would always do is we'd always list what the full field gross reserves are. That's the amount of oil and gas that's totally in the field. Because when we're the operator, that's what we're going to develop, develop the total volume. As a company, then I might want to work out what my share of those barrels might be, but that's a different calculation. Because the decision to develop it, and whether it's economic or not, it depends on the total volume. Okay? We worry about sharing out the revenue when we've produced it. So let's not worry about who, who, who gets what out of, the, out of the field. We'll, I'll talk about that when we talk about valuation of assets. So we always quote the full field, so you can see the underlying asset. Because that's how we define commerciality. The other side of the, of the table, we've got what's called the company share. Now I'm showing here what, it's, what it might be called company's gross reserves and company's net reserves, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute, but there's a distinction between the two. At the end of the day, the numbers that really matter, which drive the revenue of the company, will be their share of net reserves. Okay? So this is just for illustration. You can see how much is actually under the ground in total, but at the end of the day, it's what my share of that is, which is going to drive my revenue line. Okay? So it's important for an investor to look back into the report and, and, and there's a lot of information to see just how much of change there is from gross volumes to net attributable volumes to, the, to each company. The bottom table is very similar, except I've highlighted it. The first three um, columns are called unrisked gross resources. In other words, that's the volume of oil and gas I might discover if it was successful. And I've called them P90, P50, P10 rather than 1, P2, P3, P. As I say, you must always quote, what's the chance of it occurring? So there's no, God, no point in me telling me how much I'm going to win in the lottery this weekend if I don't tell you the chance of it being... So how can, you, how can you decide to invest in me if I don't tell you the chance of it occurring? Okay? The next six um, columns, effectively, you are, are turning those volumes into what's my share. Okay? So similar to the, to the top table. So the, the two critical things which you might think, well, are very simple that I'm going to actually spend a little bit of time on is, one is getting to the net volume, because getting to the net volume isn't always as simple as you might think. And the other thing, which, which again is probably where the most mistakes are made I've seen, is there's no good to say reporting all the fields separately. What people want to know is, well, tell me the total. So if you're an investor, you don't want to know that they've got five fields and all these sizes. They want to know what's the total potential. And the biggest mistakes are made are in the totaling, believe it or not. It's in the aggregation of the numbers. You think, well, why would that be? Should I just add them all up? Well, unfortunately, because we've, we've gone down the route of probabilistic valuations, you cannot add confidence levels arithmetically. Okay? 